Let's do this! Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we are in a completely different place. We're coming at you, well, live, but not live because not you're live watching this yes. much later. But we're coming at you from Quartz Lab here in the wonderful south of downtown Kitchener. <laughs> yeah, and thankfully there's no construction going on in the background. But uh, today is a super special episode because it is our season two finale. Finale! And we, we, uh, we've we made more episodes this year, and if I do say so, higher quality episodes than thank last you, year. Thank you, As the editor, I will take all of the credit. If, yeah. if you are listening to the podcast, it's okay. You still get the effect of the special space, because you can hear... Uh, Bernie filing and sawing a thing downstairs because yeah. we're in Quartz Lab and it's a maker space and it's an active space and stuff's happening. Yeah, and even though it's Sunday, there are people who need projects to get finished. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we wanted a little bit of a change of pace, and Jim has been cloistered here for the last week. Yes, this is the end of Art Sabbatical, which is an amazing concept, and I can't wait to do one of my own of like just. Yeah, take a week off of work and work on projects. Yeah, it, it's been really fun. I've learned a whole bunch of things. And um, I'm going to do a post-art sabbatical video maybe next week. I'm probably going to take the week off from videos apart from this one. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it was a pretty intensive week. Yeah. But the topic today is not art sabbatical or maker spaces or mm. what is being made in the workshop downstairs. Uh, but the most important thing... Mm. Yeah, and uh, that's it's it's been a tough thing to to think about, and we've had many a many a long discussions leading up to this because usually we we come up with um I don't know something that can give more direction, but when you suggested this one, I'm like, okay, let's see what you have to go like what inspired this, and you're like, no, it just sounded like a really cool thing to talk about. Well, I mean, and I'm like, okay, we, challenge we have, accepted. We've done two seasons of podcasts. And we have not talked about the most important thing. But it makes it sound like when you say that, that there is an answer of what is the most important thing. I think there is. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's going to be any kind of erudite knowledge that's going to defeat the evil coming or something like well, that. Well, way to, way to blow my prophecy for the second half. We'll see. I, I'm usually wrong. <laughs> I'm usually wrong. <laughs> we, we can always find out in season three if I'm wrong. All right, but 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 the most important thing. So for the icebreaker, what at the very least is the most important thing about this podcast to you, Ryan? This this podcast as a whole, given that it is the end of season two. Yeah. So we got two seasons. Uh, what forty or so episodes? Ish. Yeah. Probably should have looked that up before we started yeah, filming. Yeah, don't but worry that's, about that's right. You can. If, worst case, we can throw an annotation over my face with a number. <sighs> Um, I would say the most important thing about this podcast, and it's a pretty pretty selfish um, answer because it's it's about me ultimately, uh, is that the podcast forces me to get outside my head or get outside of my head. Uh, and what I mean by that is when when we first bandied the idea around that we were going to do a podcast, it was largely just to capture our natural conversations that were going on when we went out to dinner periodically. Pop philosophy and pub conversations. Yeah, I mean, and it was one of those things, it was the conversations that that I was lacking elsewhere because usually philosophical conversations with other people is philosophy up until the bottom of the second pint of beer and then after that it doesn't, it's not philosophy in my my eyes anymore. Whereas you don't drink beer and I don't feel the need to drink a lot of beer (laughs) around you thankfully. Maybe you do, or maybe maybe I need to drink more around you. But um, it, it helps a lot of other people. Yeah. Which actually, side note, I saw the greatest meme. It says, uh, "My friends tell me I don't need to drink alcohol to have fun." I say, "Okay, but you don't have to wear shoes to run, but it really fucking helps." <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good capture of it. Anyways, uh, so yeah, with with the podcast, we wanted to capture this. But one of the things I found with talking to you is. You, our conversations exposed me to a lot of things that I perhaps hadn't considered before or new ways of looking at things and I find that the podcast functions the same way that we end up talking about a lot of topics that I probably didn't get a lot give a lot of consideration to before but it forces me to get outside of my head to it's um 
I guess it com- comes back to that dialectic, you know? It's the idea of rather than doing thinking about things on my own, it's I have some pre preloaded ideas, then I throw them out into the public space and we see how it goes and then we talk back and forth and it refines my ideas and my views of the world. I'm not saying I'm good or I'm not saying I'm right, um, but I'm probably more good and more right than I was before, <laughs> if that makes Fair. any sense. Um, so that's a really long-winded answer to what is the most important thing uh, about the podcast to me. So, Jim, for you, what is the most important thing regarding the podcast? It keeps me making stuff. Um, I have not been making as many vlogs or music videos or video game videos this year because uh, I have a lot a lot of stuff going on. I've been really busy with work. I've really been really really busy with a bunch of other things. Right. And I haven't made the time to do it. Mm-hmm. And but no matter how busy I get, and you know, I use sort of busy as a pejorative mm-hmm. because. Um, if I'm busy but I can't describe to you the things I've been doing then that means I've just been playing video games <laughs> and I just don't want to admit it that's fair so I don't like the word busy um, but occupied yeah. with lots of things then uh, but no matter how occupied I am podcast still gets up mm-hmm. it still gets made it still gets filmed uh, like even in the summer when we took a break from filming, uh, you and the audience will not have noticed that break because we had podcasts going up all summer. Yeah, I don't think we missed a deadline this year. Maybe, I think we took a break for one week in November for n- novel writing just so everything could get spaced out appropriately. I believe so. I, I believe there was one... Was two podcasts a month. Yeah. Yeah, and so yeah, I think we had we had skipped ahead a week in order to fit both of them nice and neatly within the month, so that anybody who was writing a novel could also follow along with the podcast. Yeah. No, I mean like even even and now for two years we yeah. have been doing this, and it has kept me making stuff, which keeps me learning new editing techniques, which mm-hmm. keeps me sort of editing stuff and editing out. I really need to do just a smart stuff that Ryan says that I cut. Uh, video that's never going to happen just so you're aware I never ever is that going to happen but I should do that I'm just I just won't uh, because I'm a monster <laughs> so but yeah and and the sort of inertia of continuing to make stuff and continuing to make to, to have ideas and make interesting stuff mm-hmm. is a lot of fun mm-hmm. and it reminds me that I can make stuff about whatever mm-hmm so that is the most the most important thing about the podcast. Yeah. Uh, at least doing the podcast to me, uh, the, the probably the best part about it is when people come up to me and they're like, I "Heard your podcast?" I go, "Really?" <laughs> I, I got a, I got that one of those questions last night. One of my uh, we used to work together, but then he moved on. Anyways, he was at the bar last night, and I guess uh, I guess he he's seen me posting or sharing the links to the podcast and he was drunkenly asking me like how many views do you get and I'm like I'm like um we sometimes break double digits (laughs) tens of people yeah tens of people I mean it's it's a small community of people who watch and there's some important people who watch my my the head of security of the bar watches (laughs) our podcasts and and whatnot and I when he told me that I felt pretty pretty proud it's like yeah that's right somebody other than my nerd friends uh, or somebody other than the awesome engaged people that we know who support our projects it cares enough to actually watch it week over week and I don't have to tell them about it. Because that, that's the other thing is when I share... You don't the, have to tell people about it. They can subscribe on iTunes, man. Well, no. That, that's Link to subscribe on iTunes below. No, that's no, true. But uh, I find um, it works best when I, give a, I send uh, a personalized invite for people to come view it you know like courtney or lenny or whatever when our podcast goes live i'll shoot them a, a tweet to tell them like directly Man, hey you're, here's you're here's a super a... go-getter i i barely do any of that what? which is probably why we have tens of viewers what? but we're skipping out on the most important thing i guess that's true we're sidestepping the, the really difficult yeah, thing so i mean you're the guy with the answers you are as you mentioned more right and uh, more was it more right and more knowledgeable, more aware. Uh, more I think aware? I said more good. More good, more right and more good. I have been finding this this last year, and it might just be because I saw it in the last season of Doctor Who. 
I have been <laughs> asking myself, am I a good person and whatnot? And like, obviously, I don't go around killing people, but it's kind of what I'm getting at is, can I be better? Kind mm-hmm. of deal. So, 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 what is the mo- with that in mind? I guess is uh, given that you are more right and more good. Yeah. Uh, what is the most important thing? Uh, so. <sighs> Just I, your one sentence answer. What is the most important thing? Well, you you want me to talk about like what other we'll people get into might that later. talk? Okay. Um, if I had to choose one, I would say it's probably uh, something I learned in Scouts uh, that can be applied outside of it, and that is uh, leave things better than how you found them. Uh, is it, do we want to both share and then start explaining? Or sure. sh- okay, so uh, so that's mine. So leave things better than how you found them. It would be my most important thing. And Jim, what is your most important thing? Um, the most important thing is to be braver than you were a minute ago. Like, however, however brave you were in the last minute, be slightly braver than that. <laughs> At least slightly. Um, possibly great, uh, which will set you a new bar for another sixty seconds. Mm-hmm. Uh, so why, why? I mean, leave, leave things, leave leave things better than the way you found them. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of, I think, tackles a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, it is the kind of thing that is easy to regard and and not compromise on. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy to compromise um, compromise on the intent of something that you had. Like, um... And by things, you don't just mean, like, things. You mean people and situations and relationships and... Yeah, no, what, and what like I'm... What the I'm, set of, of everything. Yeah, and then what, and what I mean by it's easy to compromise, a lot of times it's easy to kind of justify not following what you intended you know kind mm-hmm. of um, I'm not stealing I'm borrowing and I just won't tell them that I'm borrowing kind of but I'll give it back or you know like I, I, I was speeding on the highway but I was just going along with the flow of traffic you know those kinds of things mm-hmm. where it's you, you're actually like violating the spirit of, of what you're supposed to be doing um, but you're able to justify it to yourself so you don't feel as bad about it. Um, so yeah, my, my, I hesitate to call it a maxim. My maxim can have a certain ambiguity to it that lends itself well to, um, a certain fluidity or abuse even, uh, on the other end of the spectrum. So like, for example, um, this maxim comes from scouting in terms of camping, um, and so the idea was wherever you go, you leave the environment in a better condition than when you found it, which usually just was a, a convenient way of telling kids that it doesn't matter if the garbage was already there, you pick it up and carry it out. So that yes. there's th- those kinds of things. Um, and uh, there's also um, uh, spinoffs of those or um, corollaries. Yeah. Uh, such as the take only pictures, leave only footprints kind of deal, right? Mm-hmm. So when you go to national um, uh, parks and whatnot, the idea is you know you don't leave you don't leave any evidence that you're there other than perhaps your footprints, and you don't remove things from the park that would take away from the experiences of other people, like rocks or trees or seedlings or anything like that right so the idea is you're leaving it in as good if not a better condition it's, there's a certain sense of stu- stewardship there um but once you get outside the camping then it's kind of, you have to wonder what it, what it is you're talking about because you can you can apply it to say people and relationships to um states in the in the world like um, your community um, places you're visiting um, online spaces um, what does it mean to leave it better what's who's the arbiter of betterment Mm -hmm. Um, what to what degree is your actions leaving things better Um, and I think 
you you run the risk of of um, potentially abusing stuff like that, especially if you're kind of meddlesome or you think you know what's better for something, but perhaps you don't, or you don't have a, an appreciation for the, the the values and whatnot. I would I would be open to an argument that better betterment includes a sort of set of mindfulness. Yeah, I was... about about. If you are not mindful about a, you know, a, a, if in a relationship with a person, for instance, mm-hmm. um, you know, any relationship, whether it's a work relationship or a personal relationship, if you're not mindful about what they think is better, mm-hmm. then anything you advocate as better is not actually better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that with this maxim that I go around enriching the lives of others. I'm not so. I'm not so high on myself to think that that's. Every person that I meet is better because they've met me. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd like to think that you okay. I, I, the, that maybe one percent of the people that I meet is is now better because they have met me. But uh, you can you can generalize it, or you can you can kind of uh, seemingly cash it out in different ways, such as um, uh, you can help or you can be instrumental in in assisting people with reaching their goals. Um, making their day to day life just a little bit better in the moment, you know, you know that that's where like things like charity comes up, or you know, just volunteering your time, doing little things to, or considering them and the, what they want and such. So, you know, like it really does come down to like the little things, like picking up garbage off the ground, kind of deal, or in this case, you know, like paying for the coffee. Uh, of the person behind you, kind of deal, right? You know, it's their their day is made better through through your kind of mindful interaction. Hey, that's a cool hat, and you're awesome for wearing it. Yeah, yeah, even complimenting that. Yes, we'll put it in the in the kind of, in the show notes. Yeah, it was it was heavily circular. It was a yellow hat, an yep. ugly yellow hat. Yeah, yep. I, I remember that comic. So, um, so yeah, I mean. To, to bring it all back, because I've needlessly overthought and complicated this, <laughs> um, it's it's a deceptively simple maxim that is it takes a little bit of thinking in order to to straighten it out and to to know how it is that you would want to faithfully apply it. But I think I think that that's one of the reasons why I chose that is regardless of culture and context I could I could very easily see this being something that is kind of universally applicable the thing that I find really interesting about it is that it isn't it isn't golden rule esque mm-hmm. it isn't you know sort of a, a qualification on you know act act in the way that you would like to be treated it is mm-hmm. simply um, advising you to regardless of how you are treated or regardless um, of 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 situation attempt to make things better yeah don't um, don't add yeah. additional harm or don't cause harm i don't know i think that, that, that there are lots of ways to um not add harm but still not make things better fair yeah yeah i mean um, if, if I, you if you are silent while things are are, are while, while wrong things are happening you are arguably not making anything worse. Yeah. But you are also not making anything better. You are not leaving a thing better than you found it. Yeah. You are, you know, you're just not making it worse. Mm-hmm. And that, I, I think that that's the sort of, I don't think that's the sort of goodness advocated by that particular most important thing. Mm-hmm. I think that the notion of making things better means being active. I just realized in my notes that I misspelled important in the title. Meh, who cares? Yeah. It's not that important. Uh, mine is be, bra- be braver than you were a minute ago. Mm. Uh, I have a lot of anxiety. And I have a lot of anxiety stuff. And I spend a lot of my time uh, in varying states of afraid. So the thing I need to be is just a little braver. Always. Um, it is the thing that I regret most often is that I was insufficiently brave. It's interesting that in all other things, uh, usually I'm the one focused on communities and you're the one focused on self improvement. But here you've got this community bettering, you know, maxim, and I've got this thing that's just like, no, I personally need to 
Uh, but I think that it, that it is the, it is the kind of thing that af- that affects everybody is that that notion that we were we were not brave enough to stand up, um, whether that was uh, to stand in front of something or to stand and be counted or to volunteer for a thing, mm-hmm. and it mounts. It is. I mean. I mean. The notion of being braver for me unpacks into that idea of not being ruled by fear. And that includes doing things like not watering your problems with unconcern. That is how small problems grow into big problems. Is mm-hmm. that you're know, like, oh well, I, I'm just really nervous about doing that thing, so I'm just going to put it off, and then it starts to grow, mm-hmm. and eventually becomes a huge thing. Mm-hmm. And I am super guilty of not doing this a, a lot, but. The reason why I know it's the most important thing is because when I don't do it, I immediately regret it. And I immediately think, I could have done that. If I had gone just one more inch, I could have done that. And I didn't. So, the most important thing for me is to think about how brave I was a minute ago and be a bit braver than that. Mm Mm-hmm. Ironically, on uh, on cameras or stages, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> but <laughs> everywhere else, um, so I mean, concrete example. I am really, really nervous on dance floors. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of sort of it unpacks into a lot of different things. There's a lot of sort of physical contact and space issues and strangers and you know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, but since the summer, I have been learning to swing dance, like we talked about in the episode with Ryan, with uh, other Ryan. Yeah. And it is a lot of fun, and I'm now in my sort of... I'm just finishing up, literally tonight, my second round of lessons. And it's really interesting to me to see people who are in their, their sort of first round who are who are struggling with a lot of the same... At least what appears to be. I don't, I don't want to cash out anybody's anxiety as being the same as mine, or their mm. struggles as being the same as mine, but... What appears to be some of the same sort of pressures and anxieties that go along with dancing and dancing with strangers and partner dancing and things like that. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting to, to stop and go, oh, I don't, I don't have that fear anymore. I have different fear, yeah. but it's not even like a matter of being brave. I don't have that fear anymore. And it feels really good. But it, it is the, the reason uh, that I, I can say that and the reason I can do that is because I had to be brave in the beginning. And I definitely had a lot of that. And I had some really supportive people to help me through it. Mm-hmm. And only now am I, am I, have I come far enough. And I think, man, I should have done this years ago. Mm. Rather than whatever I was doing, but I was just not quite there. <laughs> so, why cash it out as the most important thing? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I have a, a concrete answer as to why to cash this out above anything else other than. Like it just it seems like something that can be in some sense universally will mm-hmm. um, mm, very Kantian very Kantian yeah. well, for a virtue ethicist you sound like a Kantian I see the value <laughs> in using convenient rules to simplify life and then appreciate context later fair enough fair um, enough it, it's good to have something to fall back on um, especially because the idea of virtue ethics is you don't have the answers but you're always striving for it fair so um but i think i I think it it allows me to be more mindful and that's something in the last year or two that i've kind of struggled to come to terms with of just how unmindful how not mindful of other people I could be you know it's not that I was going out and use the term careless yeah I don't know careless this might be a bit too much careless but careless uh, 
careless consideration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, but it's, it's just the idea of um, you know, like my my um, my decisions and the things that I do. It, it would be foolish of me to think that I didn't have an impact on other people. For example, I was late coming here today, and even though you seem perfectly fine with it, my relationship with time is not a moral absolute. No, you know. But what I'm saying is, is um, just because this time I got away with it doesn't mean that you know that time couldn't have been spent doing something important if you had known ahead of time that I was going to be that late or you know like you, it pushed our plans out so that you have to push your next plans out and stuff like that that's just a pet example I mean mm-hmm. the perfect example uh, that's not related to you and I is like showing up to work late you know not not starting my preparation to go to the bar because I know that sounds like a lot, but in the winter I wear a lot of clothes, and so it takes time for me to put on a onesie and layer my socks and layer my clothing and to do my my little checks to ensure that I have everything on me. Because I, I choose to believe that when you say putting on a onesie, you do that last, and it's just a big like penguin kangaroo. <laughs> that would You're prob- just a gigantic bouncer in a penguin kangaroo. That would probably make me more approachable. <laughs> Um, but yes, no, it's, uh, it's definitely the, not quite the full base layer because I wear underwear and a, and a undershirt underneath that. But, um, so yeah, it's in the summertime. Yeah. I can get ready in five minutes and be out the door. But in the wintertime, if I, if, if all of my stuff isn't in one spot, then it takes me time to get those, like get all my clothing together, put them on in the right order, verify that I have all of the things that I need for work in my pockets and whatnot, and then oh, by the way, I also have to make sure that I use the washroom before I put my onesie <laughs> on because it is incredibly difficult to sit down on a toilet with a onesie on. You have to just like basically yeah. strip. Don't you have like a butt flap? There's a. Well, it's not a butt flap. It's a butt. Like you know how in men's underwear mm-hmm. where the the, yeah, the two yeah. things. It's, I mean, it's it's overlay, but it's not like a, I can unflap it. And You're sit really down. overthinking this mechanic right now. <laughs> it's, it's the thing is the, uh, for those who are not gross and have not turned off the podcast if you need to do a number two you need to do that before you put the onesie on because otherwise you have to take all of your clothes off just to what undo. I'm saying is don't poop in your penguin kicker room don't poop in your yes um, uh, and uh, this is a super long complicated way of saying that if I don't think to start my preparations early enough, I go to work late and as the door person if it's a busy night they appreciate, because I'm usually the first in it, so the, the head of security is outside most of the time, so he'll start early in the night, and then I show up, so that means if I'm late, then he has to handle the door that much longer by himself, which mm-hmm. can be complicated, and it's really hard to pay attention to everything. That's, that's just a perfect example uh, why it's important that uh or why over the last two years or so i've been more and more aware of just how um inconsiderate i can be um and so when when you asked me like to talk about the most important thing that was kind of the first thing that popped up is this idea Mm -hmm. of of it relates to me and it relates to how i interact with the world but it's also something that i think without waving my finger or being unnecessarily morally uh, condescending towards other people it's something that everybody can can take in you know like it's if yep. if we just treat things in in ways such that they are better than what, how we had them there's a there's a sense of stewardship there in um community yeah, you improvement sort of, you sort of take responsibility for it yeah um for me it's 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 a lot i think it's a lot simpler the mo- the I mo- hope so because that was probably a solid it, five it, minute. It also it also doesn't at any point have a penguin key roomy, so I don't know what the point is. <laughs> um, but it's just the most important thing is the thing you would never compromise on. Yeah, like full stop. I mean the yeah. the the if you're if 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 the argument um, is that liberty is the most important thing. You sacrifice your liberty when you stop at stoplights. Mm-hmm. You constrain your freedom voluntarily. And if it is the most important thing, then you would never agree to do that. No. You would never be like, why? No, I refuse to stop when you tell me to stop. But you do. Mm-hmm. Because there are lots of things that are more important than liberty. Like collective safety. Yeah. You know? Um, 
drunk driving and the forbiddance of dr- on drunk driving impedes your liberty. Mm-hmm. But we don't think that's a bad idea. In fact, we think it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. You should not get drunk and drive cars. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the most important thing has to be the thing that you would never compromise on. That you would never, ever say set aside. I mean, people. We, we talked about in the in the pre-show a little bit about people who, who who advocate for things like happiness or family, but there are times when you would set those things aside. I mean, setting aside happiness is probably one of the most common things we do I yeah. mean, with things like uh, delayed gratification. Like, no, 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 no. This is going to pay off. I'm going to work really hard and be miserable for now, but at the end, it's going to pay off. Yeah. But if if happiness was the most important thing, then you would just grab that happiness. Yeah. So. For me, there is no point at which anyone should be ruled by fear. Mm-hmm. There is no point at which anyone should be made to be to be afraid or to feel like they, you know, is essentially are cowardly. Mm-hmm. And it's often a thing that, that we make ourselves feel like. And for, for me, it certainly is. So, mm, hear the sound of that metal break. <laughs> but, it's, it's, so the, there's this sense of the, the thing that I should never compromise on is being braver. And part of that means helping other people be brave. Mm-hmm. Part of that means understanding when people can't be. Mm-hmm. Um, but it all it, it, and the other the, the reason why I know that it is the most important thing is because I do compromise on it mm. all the time you know and I regret it immediately mm. I'm like I I should have just gone one more inch mm. and I didn't so yeah I mean that's sort of that is the way that it that it it parcels out for me, and there are lots of like, things that I think that are important, mm. and I think you, it is even possible to probably have more than one most important thing. Mm-hmm. But it seems worth worthwhile to think about what the most important thing is. Yeah, and I had uh, I had a week recently where I had very little to do, and I had a lot of time. Uh, on my mind and on my hands and on my other places where I keep my time and there's a, there, there, so there's a lot of opportunity to go what is, the, what is the most important thing and one of the things I really try to take out of Art Sabbatical and I, I've been vlogging and I might cut this bit from the um, beginning of, the, of, of my, from my, from my day one private personals of vlog stash from Art Sabbatical was I wanted to come to a collective art space so that I could be braver about making art mm-hmm. and making things because when other people are around I get really nervous mm-hmm. and I get self-conscious and I need to throw that away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did not master that this week, but I'm certainly better than I was. Fair enough. But it is a worthwhile thing to think about, I think, because if nothing else it will tell you nothing about the world and something really important about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. If we learned anything from Engage, it is... There's an there's incredible <laughs> value in, in introspection. Yeah. I hope so, because I've been doing a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> you just... Jim, you've just been spending far too much time gazing at your navel. Yeah. No, basically. I live in my own head. That's what's, yeah. It's where all my... I keep all my comfy thinking chairs i don't know yeah but i mean and also this is right now as of filming this is the perfect time to do it because as you pointed out it's we're heading into the holiday christmas whatever season yeah and this seems like a wonderful time to do that because there's going to be a lot of you're going to have a lot of downtime whether or not you're taking taking time off work or you're forced not to work because, like, for example, the college closes at noon on the 24th. It doesn't open until the first working day after the New Year holiday. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I've got all this they time. turn the heat off, man. 
Uh, they do something. I mean, I, I imagine security's <laughs> there, but for the most part, people are barred from the building. Um, like, staff aren't even really... They have to be escorted to their desk if they want to go in and get something. Huh. That's the idea. Is it's forced time away. Um, and so, I mean, like, I've got a lot of time, plus a lot of us travel places during the holidays. Well, I think during the holidays, you just... Especially especially the winter holidays, where you're yeah. like, you know, focus on what really matters. Yeah. The answer is, that is an open question about what really matters and what the most important thing is. Yeah. I am curious to know what your most important thing is, yeah. and you can leave it in the comments if you feel comfortable. If you don't, cool. Uh, yeah. No worries. It is a th- it, it is often a tough thing to think about and a tough thing to articulate. Yeah. But uh, those are ours, and we will see you in January. Yeah. For season three of the Concept Crucible podcast. I'm I'm excited. We've we've sat down and started looking at what we could do to, to spice things up. Oh yeah. We've got a couple cool brainstorm ideas uh, that we're not going to commit to right now. No, no internet <laughs> promises are coming out of this. Other no than that, internet promises. The, the only internet promise we'll make is we will be back for season 3 in January. Um, so hopefully we'll see you on the other side of the holidays. Uh, do you have any final messages? Stay awesome. He stole my line. Preamble. <laughs> Preamble. Has n- almost nothing to do with the show itself. Yep, that's totally going in the outro. Yeah, that's it. What, what, the entire preamble is now the outro? The whole preamble.